Light rays travel in straight lines unless they encounter interfaces. When a light ray passes from one medium into another, for example from air into a glass or clear plastic prism, the light ray refracts. This means rather than continuing on in a straight line, the ray bends. The light ray's initial and new paths are described by the angles the ray's paths make with a line normal to the surface where the light ray hits. The angle between the path of the light ray prior to encountering the surface and the normal is the angle of incidence. The angle of refraction describes the light ray's new path inside the prism. This is the angle between the light ray's new path and the normal on that side of the interface. The angle of refraction depends upon the refractive index n of the two media and occurs in accordance with Snell's law which states that the sine of the angle between the normal and the light ray in one medium over the sine of the angle between the normal and the light ray in the other medium is equal to the inverse of the ratio of the two refractive indexes. The refractive index of a material is a function of its density. The greater a material's density, the higher the refractive index. Air has a refractive index of 1, and in this example the prism is made of a clear plastic with a refractive index of 1.5. With this information, we know three of the four variables of the Snell's Law equation. To determine the path the light ray will take upon entering the prism, all we have to do is solve for the second angle, which in this case is theta r, the angle of refraction. The triangle is an equilateral triangle, and the light ray is parallel to the bottom, so theta i, the angle of incidence, is 30 degrees. I won't go through the calculations, but if you solve for theta r with an angle of incidence of 30 degrees and refractive indexes of 1 and 1.5, the angle of refraction is 19.5. Knowing this angle allows us to draw the path a light ray takes through the prism. Consistent with the fact that a ray passing from a less to a more dense medium will refract towards the normal, the angle of refraction is less than the angle of incidence. In the absence of another interface, the light ray would continue to travel in a straight line again. However, in this situation, the ray encounters another interface at the other side of the prism. In order to determine the path the ray will take at this interface, we go through the same process again. Draw a line normal to the surface at the point at which the light ray hits the surface. The angle between the path of the light ray and this normal is the angle of incidence at this interface. This angle can be estimated based on what we know about the shape of the prism and the ray's path. Under the conditions shown in the figure, the angle of incidence at the exit point is 40.5 degrees. So, instead of continuing straight, the light ray refracts a second time. Since it's passing from a more to a less dense medium, the ray will bend away from the normal. Solving the equation given the refractive indexes of 1 and 1.5 and an angle of incidence of 40.5, the angle of refraction for the light ray passing out of the prism is 76.9 degrees. This is the typical situation described when talking about light rays interacting with a prism but it's important to understand that light does not always pass through at an interface. If we take another ray of light hitting the prism at the same angle but at a different position, the angle of incidence will be the same at the point of entry, and the ray of light will bend towards the normal as before. But if the path takes it to the bottom of the prism rather than to the far side, the ray's behavior is different. To figure out how the light ray will behave at this interface, we follow the same process, calculate the angle of incidence relative to the normal which in this case is 79.5 degrees. The key point is that 79.5 degrees is greater than the critical angle, meaning that rather than passing through the interface and refracting, total internal reflection occurs. The law of reflection states that the angle of reflection equals the angle of incidence, allowing us to calculate the path of the ray as it reflects and moves back into the prism where it will eventually hit the far side. The process of calculating angles of incidence, angles of refraction, and whether or not a ray of light will undergo total internal reflection can be used to describe the path of any ray of light. This illustration shows a red light ray and a prism. The light ray travels in a straight line unless it hits the prism. If it enters the prism, it refracts. 
Since the prism is more dense than the surrounding air, the ray bends towards the normal. It then travels in a straight line until it hits the far side of the prism. At this point, it refracts again. This time, the light ray refracts away from the normal as it passes from a higher to a lower density medium. The angle between the path of the ray inside the prism and a line normal to the bottom is greater than the critical angle. So if the ray hits the bottom, total internal reflection occurs. This pattern of determining the angle of refraction at each interface along with occurrences of total internal reflection when the angle of incidence exceeds the critical angle can be used to describe the path light rays take through any shaped lens.